Hey there, Dr. Christensen here. You ever heard a jingle something like this? The incredible edible egg. <laughs> I'm a bad singer. Um, and I saw way too much TV in the 70s when I was really young, but that one burned in my brain. So let's talk about eggs. You know, I've been in this stage here lately of just really scouring medical research. Honestly, I'm not sure when it really started, but there's a lot of things that I had assumed and I've heard as popular fads or accepted ideas that I just went to the literature and studied very deeply on that and I would see very different findings from what people were commonly talking about. I think the first experience was actually a long time ago in reference to hormone replacement before I even finished medical school. And these last several months, I've just been in a place of assuming nothing and scouring literature and finding the direct answers for all of us to really have a clear sense of that. And it's almost been like, I don't know, like I just learned that I'm really living like the matrix where you're really living inside of a chamber and the whole world was an illusion. It's, <laughs> it's almost been like that. So I wanted to sort out all the information on eggs. Uh, eggs are good quality protein sources. They're about six or seven grams of nice, complete amino acid profiles, extremely high quality. They are low quantity protein foods. You know, for breakfast, for example, a lot of data that I've looked at has talked about at least 20, maybe 25 grams for, for getting your first meal. And so for eggs, you'd need what, like four of those? That's not practical. No one suggests that's a good idea. They are a good source of many nutrients. They've got some B vitamins. The ones that are grass-fed may have some carotenoids. They have a little bit of heme iron in them, and they do really well on satiety tests. They fill you up for quite a while. They contain choline, and for quite a while we thought choline was a good thing. There's now this compound called TMAO, and we're still sorting that out a bit. It's honestly not clear whether it's good or bad, so that's, that's uncertain. Now, the fear about eggs, the biggest fear, was with the earliest iterations of cholesterol ideation. So it seems simple that if there's cholesterol in damaged blood vessels when someone has had a heart attack, if there's cholesterol, saturated fat, and plaque there, then dietary versions of the same thing must cause it to build up. So it seemed a very simple cause and effect. And that was a good hypothesis. It really wasn't a good conclusion. It's not, it's not, it's not accurate to make large conclusions about health outcomes based upon mental models and theories. But they're good places to spawn research, to do research off of. So the initial thing was cholesterol, heart bad, cholesterol, diet bad, and cholesterol, eggs really high. You know, eggs are one of the highest sources of dietary cholesterol, upwards of 200 milligrams per egg. And the Heart Association has recommended for quite some time that 300 milligrams is an upper limit for most people. Some have argued lower limits, but you can't get by on two eggs a day and have less than that safe amount of cholesterol. So they did recommend restricting eggs and avoiding them and egg sales and egg use plummeted. There was really a group that was tied to the egg industry in Illinois that funded lots and lots of research. And, you know, funding is relevant, funding is important, but in the long scheme of things, science does self-correct. So we've got to be aware of biases, but we can't ignore good data just because it came from a bad source. You know, if a murderer told you that killing was bad, it's still bad. <laughs> so biases are real, but not to be ignored. And a lot of new studies showed up that eggs really didn't raise cholesterol in ways that they thought it would. The expectation was that eggs had cholesterol, eggs would raise cholesterol, and that would cause more heart disease. And then that didn't pan out. So more and more studies showed that eggs really didn't raise cholesterol. They looked at that first question. Despite having quite a bit of cholesterol, one can argue about many reasons why eggs don't influence your blood cholesterol in a big way and they may even affect HDL cholesterol more than the bad cholesterols. So the first version of data was rather, didn't take all that long to do, it took a few years to do, and they showed, yeah, eggs don't raise cholesterol. Now the bigger question is, how do eggs affect actual heart disease risk? That's the more important question. So cholesterol is a marker, and yes, those that have higher cholesterol have more rates of heart disease, but not everything that influences cholesterol influences heart disease, either good or bad. So the more meaningful studies are really, how does egg outcome correspond to heart disease? And that data didn't exist so much earlier along. But thankfully now it does. Now we've got some pretty good studies that show not just the cholesterol, but the overall heart disease risk. And so, so congestive heart disease, cardiovascular disease, it seems that up to about seven eggs a week, there's no effects good or bad. 
doesn't make a difference. Now, stroke risk is a little bit different. So even averaging an egg a day, about five a week, could decrease stroke risk. Up, up, to, up to one a day may decrease stroke risk. Above that, not certain, but slight decrease. So there may be helpful. But let's look at heart disease and let's look at other conditions that have been studied. So heart disease, heart failure, more than seven eggs a week has corresponded with a 25% increase in heart failure per some large studies. We think about brain aging, Alzheimer's and dementia, and it's a popular idea that the brain needs choline, the brain needs cholesterol, the brain needs saturated fats, and therefore eggs should be good for all those things. So that's, that's the theory, that's the idea. But the human outcome studies have shown something different. They've shown that um, no big correlation either way. So neither cholesterol intake nor egg intake seems to, to affect dementia or Alzheimer's disease in some populations. This has not been done in all populations. To be precise, it's Finnish men. So not Finnish like done, Finnish like Scandinavian. <laughs> then we think about cancer risks, a very relevant thing, especially for women. So breast cancer, above five eggs per week, has a 4% increase for breast cancer risk. And if you're talking about now more than five eggs a week, then you're talking about a nine, I'm sorry, nine eggs a week is now a 9% increase for risk. Uh, ovarian cancer, anything above five eggs per week is an 8% risk factor for ovarian cancer for women. So totally, totally relevant. Also, we've seen that other cancers are tied in as well. So it is now a strong, thought to be a strong trigger for several different cancers. And what are the main action steps? What are the takeaways from this? Well, if, you, if you're not sensitive to eggs, which some can be, then a few per week is probably harmless, probably no downside to up to three a week for most populations. But many people have overt allergies and many others have known short-term sensitivities. So you wanna check for that and be aware of it. But barring those scenarios, above a few per week seems to be a clear factor for several cancers. And also not so much heart attacks or strokes, but congestive heart failure, other types of heart disease. So those are drawbacks to it. So action steps, how do you really put eggs into the context of your diet? I wouldn't do eggs daily for breakfast. You know, on occasion, one or two here and there, probably not a big deal, but not a daily staple food. Small amounts of eggs in other products when someone's not sensitive, probably fine also, but I would move them out of the everyday food and put them in the sometimes or occasional food. So again, not to demonize because they are neutral in a lot of ways and possibly helpful in some other ways, but there are these clear drawbacks that we've seen. And the biggest thing has been the category of the cancers. You know, one thing I didn't mention, which was important, probably one of the most shocking things I saw was prostate cancer risk. So there's prostate cancer and there's fatal prostate cancer. You know, I have a prostate and I'll probably die with prostate cancer statistically. So there's dying with it and dying from it. And most men who are lucky enough to live past their 70s will have a few pesky prostate cancer cells. But in most cases, that's not relevant. Those things are not going to shorten their lifespan. But some men, unfortunately, have aggressive prostate cancer, which can shorten their lifespan. And what we saw was that even five eggs per week corresponded with a 47% increased risk of prostate cancer. Now, I wish there was more studies looking at, well, what about one a week or two a week or three a week? Was there, was it like this or did it just like, was, was it five or, or less than that was fine? We don't know that. So I think that is a concern for men and worth thinking about. Bladder cancer has been studied, not shown to be a factor with eggs either way. Diabetes, type two diabetes, more than three a week does increase the risk for type two diabetes. Oddly, this only shows up in US populations and the risk is very linear, meaning that everything you do above three per week is greater degrees of clear risk. So again, women probably one to three harmless. For men, probably staying under three is, is smart or even avoiding altogether if there are concerns about fatal prostate cancer risk. So eggs, <laughs> not everyday staples. I would think about focusing on more so cage-free, free range, omega-3, probably some positive differences, but again, still making them sometimes foods and not everyday foods. Dr. Christensen here with you. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.